Hi guys, so in this video we'll look at reverse integer problem. So uh, in this problem we are given a 32-bit signed integer and we need to return the reverse of that integer. So let's look at these examples. So if we are given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we need to return 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If we are given minus 6, 7, 8, 9, then we need to return minus 9, 7, 8, 6. And if we are return if we are given this number, which is the maximum value a 32 bit integer can hold, then we need to return zero. Why zero? So let's see this. In case if a reverse causes overflow, then return zero. So if we try to reverse this number, obviously the first digits would be like starting digits would be seven, four, six, three, which is obviously bigger than this number. So a 32 bit integer cannot hold this number. So it'll cause overflow. So we need to return zero. So uh, that's the second condition. So uh, anyways, it's still a pretty straightforward, easy problem. However, what makes it interesting is this condition. So our algorithm should have, should use only 32 bit sign integers. We should not use long double or float. So this is what makes it interesting. So let's see how we'll do it and then we'll come back and uh, run our code. So uh, to solve this reverse integer problem, we'll take these two integers, one, two, three, four, five, and the max 32 bit max positive value as our base case, and we'll see how to solve it. So as you can imagine, uh, we'll take, uh, to solve this problem, what we'll do is we'll take the last digit of the number, put it into the other number, and then pick the second last digit, multiply that number by 10 and then add that second last digit. Then keep doing that process and then the numbers would be reversed. So uh, let's see how we do it. So uh, this is the formula for it. Uh, we'll just uh, ignore the blue part right now and we'll do rest and see uh, what this is and then uh, finish up. So let's see this number. So our number is X, which is one, two, three, four, five, right? So uh, right now our temp and result are zero. So now what we do is we take the last digit from X, which is X mod 10. So last digit would be five. And what we do is we do result into 10 plus last digit. So temp would be five, right? And then we put temp into result. So this would be five and then we divide X by 10. So X would be one, two, three, four and then we repeat the process. We again take the last digit, which now would be four. We do result into 10 plus last digit. So result into 10 plus last digit, 54. We copy it 54 and then we do X divided by 10. So uh, just keep doing this process. So this will keep happening like three will 543, 543, x will become 12 then again take the last digit multiply this by 10 and add 2 x divided by 10 and then eventually this will be reversed and x would be 0 and then we'll come out of the loop and we'll return result so a uh, simple straightforward thing now the interesting thing that uh, makes it interesting is uh, the overflow part. So this is where uh, this thing will come in play. So let's look at other example and let's see how we'll handle the overflow. Okay, so now when we take this number, this is how our flow would look like based on our formula. So uh, initially the numbers are zero. We take last digit, uh, we multiply the number by 10 and then add last digit. And we keep doing that. So until we reach at this stage. So uh, now let's look at this uh, formula in blue. So uh, if you look at these two steps, basically what we are doing is we are reversing this step. So uh, let's take last digit on this side. So it'll become temp minus last digit. And then if we take multiplication by 10, it'll become division by 10. So we are doing exactly same thing. Temp minus last digit and divide by 10. So we are just taking, checking that if the new number that we got, if we reverse that all those things, does it equal to result again or not? So why are we doing that? Because 
uh, when we are at the last digit of this number, uh, before this, our number is 74638471, and our result is this. Now, uh, we know this is like almost like uh, reaching the max value of this. Like, if we multiply this by 10, it'll overflow. So, that's exactly what happens. So, uh, we get last digit as 2. Our result is this. So, we multiply result by 10 and then we add last digit 2. So what happens is this causes the number to overflow the 32 bits. So we get some random junk unexpected value, which is not expecting to here. So now when we try to reverse engineer this number, when we say this minus last digit, which is two divided by 10, is this equal to this, which obviously not, then we say return zero. So that's how we check or uh, if overflow happened or not. We just reverse engineer the process and we say, oh, by the way, I think overflow happened because the number is not coming matching to this. So uh, that's how we'll check overflow. So uh, I do want to mention that what we are doing is we are causing the overflow and then we are checking has the overflow happened. Uh, there is one more way to uh, check overflow even before causing it. Uh, so let's look at that way on how we do that. Uh, I feel that that is a better approach because over here we are doing like multiplication and addition to get our number and then we are doing division and everything. So uh, it's an unnecessary step if we can like check beforehand itself uh, whether overflow is going to happen or not. So let's see how we'll do that. Okay. So now uh, we'll look at other way of uh, checking overflow. So basically, uh, even before overflow happens, we'll say that, okay, overflow will happen now based on the numbers and the condition. So uh, let's see how we'll do that. So uh, this is how basically we'll do that. So we'll find out a limit. So basically, let's say this is our max 32 bit value. So now what we do is we divide this by 10. So we simply remove the seven. So our limit is 21474 So now we know that if any number in this process, if any number reaches this value, like if it's greater than this value, and if we are going to multiply 10 to that number, it would be more than this. So we know that, right? Let's say if my number is, let's say if this was three one four seven four eight three six four if this is my number in this process and if i multiply this by 10 and plus any last digit i know that it will be greater than this 32 bit signed integer so i when i when my number reaches this or more than this i can stop my processing and i can say that overflow is going to happen so return zero so uh yeah let's look at this so uh yeah, there's just one more condition like if we uh, if our number reaches exactly this value, like 21474 then what we need to do is we need to additionally check what is the incoming digit. So if incoming digit is seven, then we can say yes, you can multiply this number by 10 and you can add seven and you'll get this. But if our result is this and incoming digit or the last digit is eight or nine, then we know that we'll have overflow. So basically these will be the two conditions to check if overflow has happened. If our result, which we are calculating, if it's greater than limit or if result is equal to limit, but the last digit is greater than this uh, uh, seven. So then we can say that, yes, if you keep processing, overflow will happen and uh, you'll have unexpected result. So better return zero. So uh, there you go. So uh, yeah, you feel free to have implement any approach. Uh, obviously the previous one is easier to code and quicker to code. Uh, this will take uh, more time. So based on our condition, based on your condition, uh, do whichever you feel comfortable with. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, uh, there will be a uh, there will be a special case uh, for negative numbers if we for have this approach because uh, in case of negative uh, value the minimum value that a 32-bit integer can
can have is so you notice that there is just one more so instead of seven it's eight so uh, overall the approach remains same we just need to make sure that if it's a negative number then we are taking care of this uh, last digit uh, and we are making sure that last digit is greater than eight so that's all so uh, let's look at the code uh, let's run the code and make sure that whatever we did uh, run successfully okay so this is our uh, final code we have our main method which is calling the reverse method on these three numbers so uh, let's look at our reverse method so uh, similar to what we discussed on the whiteboard the first approach uh, last digit uh, mod 10 and then take temp check if overflow has happened if not then copy the result and reduce x by dividing it 10 and then return result so uh, let's run it let's make sure uh, we get the expected output and uh, then we'll look at the second approach so uh, yeah there's a console line you guys can use it if you want to debug your code so let's make sure that that's commented and we got a clean output yeah there you go so uh the numbers that we expected and uh, the last one causes overflow so we're returning zero so let's look at the second approach so i've just named it at reverse two so let's reverse two reverse two reverse two so uh yeah this is the approach of uh, checking the overflow before happening so we're going to say that yes if we keep continuing then overflow will happen so uh yeah exactly similar to what we discussed uh, we pre-calculate the limit we pre-calculate the limit digit and uh, we check if the result is greater than limit or if it result is equal to limit but the last digit is greater than the limit digit now as we said like if the number is negative int min value is one greater than by int max value if you ignore the sign so if the number is negative then we are adding one to our limit digit and uh, what we are doing is we are taking absolute value of x so if it's x is negative we remove the negative sign and before returning the result we put the negative sign back so uh, uh, exactly similar to what we discussed uh, let's make sure that this also runs fine and then uh, that should be it so yeah there you go uh, expected output so uh, that's it for this video guys uh, I do have like a Java code also over there so both the uh, files would be there in the description link to both the files so if you guys like the video learn something new uh, give a thumbs up on the video let me know your feedback suggestion in comments and then subscribe for more videos